Most righteous Father, we thank you, O oh God, for another day. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us, O oh God. We thank you for the provisions. Father God, saturate us tonight, Lord, we pray. As we go through scripture, we ask once again for you to correct us and to convict us, Lord. We ask, O oh Father God, that this scripture and these chapters will bring forth revelation. We pray, O oh God, that we will be able to apply these words unto our life. And Father God, it will help us to continue to be humble and continue to spread the gospel and to continue to love others the way you have designed love to be. We thank you, O oh Father God, for you are teaching us to be set apart. You are teaching us to be a peculiar people. And Lord, we pray, O oh Father God, that we will not look at what others are doing or what society is doing, that we will not look to want to blend in, but oh God, that we will embrace a cho that we are chosen, that we are a chosen generation, that we are different, oh God, that we are set apart, that we are saints. We thank you, Father God, that we are not the old man, but we are the new man, we are a new creature, that we understand that all old things are passed away and all things are new for us, that we are held at a different standard, that we ought to do things that align with your word and not according to what friends and other people may say. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for you have helped us to understand that you, there are people that shouldn't be in our lives because they don't walk according to your will. And so we ought not to have communication with those, even though they say they're in the church, with those, oh Father God, who are not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us, oh God, that our mother, our father, our brothers, who is our mother, who is our brothers, who is our sisters, those who do the will of the Lord. And we know that our father is you, oh God. And so we're grateful and we're thankful for this. And we ask that you'll continue to help us and to lead us and to guide us. And we ask, oh God, that you'll continue, Father God, to give us the strength so that we will not grow weary in well-doing. And that we will continue, oh God, to be a servant unto others as you, oh Father God, have continued to help us to see that we ought to give and be selfless, not selfish. We thank you once again for you are God. You sit high, you look below. We thank you, O oh God, for keeping us safe, for keeping us all this time, for opening doors, for opening our eyes, for removing the scales. We're grateful for your forgiveness, and we repent now of any sins that we may have committed, whether it be known unto us or unbeknownst. We ask, O oh Father God, to give, to cleanse our heart, O oh God. Renew our spirit, renew our heart, we thank you, O oh Father God. And we come to you once again, laying all burdens and all things, O oh Father God, at your feet, so that we will be rid of distractions. We honor you, we thank you, we magnify you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Isaiah chapter 47. Get off your high horse and sit in the dirt, virgin daughter of Babylon. No more throne for you. Sit on the ground, daughter of the Chaldeans. Nobody will be calling you charming and alluring anymore. Get used to it. Get a job, any old job. Clean gutters, scrub toilets. Pawn your gowns and scarves. Put on your working pants. The party's over. Your new body will be on public display, exposed to vulgar taunts. It's vengeance time, and I'm taking vengeance. No one gets left off the hook. Our Redeemer speaks, named God of the angel armies, the Holy of Israel. Shut up and get out of the way, daughter of Chaldeans. You'll no longer be called First Lady of the Kingdom. I was fed up with my people, thoroughly disgusted with my progeny. I turned them over to you, but you had no compassion. You put old men and women to cruel hard labor. You said I'm the first lady. I'll always be the pampered darling. 
You took nothing seriously, took nothing to heart. Never gave tomorrow a thought. Well, start thinking, party girl. You're acting like the center of the universe, smugly saying to yourself, I'm number one. There's nobody but me. I'll never be a widow. I'll never lose my children. Those two things are going to hit you both at once. Suddenly on the same day, spouse and children gone, a total loss. Despite your many enchantments and charms, you were so confident and comfortable in your evil life, saying no one sees me. You thought you knew so much, had everything figured out. What delusion. Smugly telling yourself, I'm number one. There's nobody but me. Ruin descends. You can't charm it away. Disaster strikes. You, ca you can't cast it off with spells. Catastrophe sudden and total, and you're totally at sea, totally bewildered. But don't give up from your great repertoire of enchantments. There must be one you haven't yet tired. You've been at this a long time. Surely something will work. I know you're exhausted trying out remedies, but don't give up. Call in the astrologers and stargazers. They're good at this. Surely they can work up something. Fat chance you'd be grasping at straws that are already in the fire. A fire that is even now raging. Your experts are in it and won't get out. It's not a fire for cooking venison stew. Not a fire to warm you on a winter night. That's the fate of your friends in sorcery, your magician cronies. You've been colluding with all your life. They feel, they reel, confused, bumping into one another. None of them bother to help you. Isaiah chapter 48. And now listen to this, family of Jacob. You who are called by the name Israel, who got you started in the loins of Judah, you who use God's name to back up your promises and pray to the God of Israel? But do you mean it? Do you live like it? You claim to be citizens of the holy city. You act as though you lean on the God of Israel, named God of the angel armies. For a long time now, I've let you in on the way I work. I told you what I was going to do beforehand. Then I did it, and it was done, and that's that. I know you're a bunch of hardheads, obstinate and flint-faced. So I got a running start and began telling you what was going on before it happened. This is why you can't say, my god idol did this. My favorite god carving commanded this. You have all this evidence confirmed by your own eyes and ears. Shouldn't you be talking about it? And that was just the beginning. I have a lot more to tell you. Things you never knew existed. This isn't a variation on the same old thing. This is new, brand new. Something you'd never guess or dream up. When you hear this, you won't be able to say, I knew that all along. You've never been good listeners to me. You have a history of ignoring me. A sorry track record of fickle attachments, rebels from the room from the womb. But out of the sheer goodness of my heart, because of who I am, I keep a tight rein on my anger and hold my temper. I don't wash my hands of you. Do you see what I've done? I've refined you, but not without fire. I've tested you like silver in the furnace of affliction. Out of myself, simply because of who I am, I do what I do. I have my reputation to keep up. I'm not playing second fiddle to either God or people. Listen, Jacob. Listen, Israel. I'm the one who named you. I'm the one. I got things started, and yes, I'll wrap them up. Earth is my work, handmade. And the skies, I made them too. Horizon to horizon. When I speak, they're on their feet at attention. Come everybody, gather around, listen. Who among the gods has delivered the news? I, God, love this man, Cyrus, and I'm using him to do what I want with Babylon. I, yes, I have spoken. I've called him. I've brought him here. He'll be successful. Come close, listen carefully. 
I've never kept secrets from you. I've always been present with you. And now the master, God, sends me and his spirit. With this message from God, your redeemer, the holy of Israel, I am God, your God, who teaches you how to live right and well. I show you what to do, where to go. If you had listened all along to what I had told you, your life would have flowed full like a river. Blessings rolling in like waves from the sea. Children and grandchildren are like sand. Your progeny like grains of sand. There would be no end of them. No danger of losing touch with me. Get out of Babylon. Run from the Babylonians. Shout the news. Broadcast it. Let the world know the whole world. Tell them God redeemed his dear servant Jacob. They weren't thirsty when he led them through the desert. He made water pour out of the rock. He split the rock and the water gushed. There's no peace, says God, for the wicked. Isaiah chapter 49. Listen, far-flung islands. Pay attention, far away people. God put me to work from the day I was born. The moment I entered the world, he named me. He gave me speech that would cut and penetrate. He kept his hand on me to protect me. He made me his straight arrow and hid me in his quiver. He said to me, you're my dear servant, Israel, through whom I'll shine. But I said, I've worked for nothing. I've nothing to show for a life of hard work. Nevertheless, I'll let God have the last word. I'll let him pronounce his verdict. And now, God says, this God who took me in hand from the moment of birth to be his servant, to bring Jacob back home to him. I set a reunion for Israel. What an honor for me in God's eyes. That God should be my strength, he says. But that's not a big enough job for my servant, just to recover the tribes of Jacob, merely to round up the strays of Israel. I'm setting you up as a light for the nations so that my salvation becomes global. God, Redeemer of Israel, the Holy of Israel, says to, despised, to the despised one, kicked around by the nations, slave labor to the ruling class, kings will see, get to their feet, the princes too, and then fall on their faces in homage because of God who had, has faithfully kept his word, the Holy of Israel who has chosen you. God also says, when the time's ripe, I answer you. When victories do, I help you. I form you and use you to reconnect the people with me, to put the land in order, to resettle families on the ruined properties. I tell prisoners, come on out, you're free. And those huddled in fear, it's all right, it's safe now. There'll be footstands along all the roads, picnics on all the hills. Nobody hungry, nobody thirsty. Shade from the sun, shelter from the wind, for the compassionate one guides them takes them to the best springs. I'll make all my mountains into roads, turn them into a super highway. Look, these coming from far countries and those out of the north, these streaming in from the west and those from all the way down the Nile. Heavens raise the roof, earth wake the dead, mountains send up cheers. God has comforted his people. He has tenderly nursed his beaten up, beaten down people. But Zion said, I don't get it. God has left me. My master has forgotten I even exist. Can a mother forget the infant at her breast walk away from the baby she bore? But even if mothers forget, I never forget you. Never. Look, I've written your names on the backs of my hands. The walls you're rebuilding are never out of my sight. Your builders are faster than your wreckers. The demolition crews are gone for good. Look up, look around, look well. See them all gathered, coming to you. As sure as I am the living God, God's decree, you're going to put them on like so much jewelry. You're going to, be, you're going to use them to dress up like a bride. And your ruined land, your devastated, decimated land, filled with more people than you know what to do with. And your barbarian enemies are a fading memory. 
The children born in your exile will be saying, It's getting too crowded here. I need more room. And you'll say to yourself, Where on earth did these children come from? I lost everything, had nothing, was exiled and penniless. So who reared these children? How did these children get here? The master God says, Look, I signal to the nations. I raise my flag to summon the people. Here they'll come, women carrying their little boys in their arms, men carrying your little girls on their shoulders. Kings will be your babysitters. Princesses will be your nursemaids. They'll offer to do all your drudge work, scrub your floors, do your laundry. You'll know then that I am God. No one who hopes in me ever regrets it. Can plunder be retrieved from my giant prisoners of war gotten back from a tyrant? But God says, even if a giant grips the plunder and a tyrant holds my people prisoner, I'm the one who's on your side, defending your cause, rescuing your children, and your enemies, crazed and desperate, will turn on themselves, killing each other in a frenzy of self-destruction. Then everyone will know that I, God, have saved you. I, the mighty one of Jacob. Amen. Amen.